comforter He's here right now He'll fix your heart If you let him He's the comforter Oh yeah I'm <laughs> He's right here right now If you're young If you're old He'll take Control Whatever your needs, he'll get right in the midst of your situation. All you got to do is trust him. He'll fix every problem. <laughs> All you got to do is trust him. Who am I talking to? Oh, yeah. He'll fix every problem. All you got to do is trust him. Oh, somebody, he'll fix every problem. All you gotta do is trust him. Come on, lift your hands and praise him. See, here's what I hear the Spirit saying right now. Listen, listen, somebody got him a unique problem. You got unique desires. That's why so many people are stepping outside of grace because you got unique yearnings got special yearnings and the enemy has told you that God don't understand that's why we got all the alphabets in demand because they think that the Holy Spirit cannot minister to those unique desires that's revelation did you hear? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. The reason that you step over here is you think that God don't have something for your unique desire. Why does a married person step over here? Because he, he or she thinks that what they need is not in that person. Why does a single person step over here? Because they think that it's not in God. Why does a person drink and get addicted? Because they think that the Holy Ghost cannot meet that desire. Huh? Come on. There is no human being, young or old, that God don't have the answer for. But the answer is resting in God, being not afraid. He has something for every uniqueness of your soul. That's why we have perversion. We think that my desire cannot be satisfied in the parameters of God's authority. So I step outside to get my nourishment. I go somewhere else to get it. And then God says, because you have done this thing, I cut off your joy. But joy comes in me within the parameters of God. And that thing that drives you to Satan is what creates your uniqueness in God when you let God fix you. Oh, I'm ministering right now. Because if I wasn't doing this in the Holy Ghost, I would have to go and satisfy this somewhere else. But this is also in you. What looks crazy to somebody else, when you let God get a hold of it, it becomes creativity. It becomes your uniqueness. This is why we got all the alphabets. Because they say, I don't fit in. But there's nothing that God has created that you can't fit in. Because God created everything and it was good. But when you bring it under his umbrella, he takes that and then he creates something that's beyond Z. See, we are beyond Z. They are within A to Z. I'm outside of Z. What comes after Z? <laughs> that's why the world don't understand you and it don't understand. Come on. You outside of Z. 
I'm not an A, I'm not a B, I'm not a G, I'm not a T, I'm not a, a Q. I'm outside of Z. And that's why if you're in the world, you can't understand. And all of you who trying to be in the world, they got an alphabet for you. A, adulterer. B, I-T. W-I-T. D-O-G. There's something for every one of them. M. But when you get in God, you ain't in none of them. <laughs> so by faith, <laughs> come on. You ain't in your, I'm past Z. Look at somebody say, I ain't in there. I'm not in the alphabets. You can't find me. I wish I had a church here today. You can't find me. What we'll come after Z? We'll find out. But I'm not even Z. Look at somebody say, I'm outside of Z. That's why you don't understand me. You say he ought to sit his old self down. Yeah, I'm outside of Z. Young people, you're trying to fit within A to Z. That's your problem. But when you get secure in God, you ain't trying to fit within A to Z. This is what other men do. This is what other wives do. This is what other husbands do. But I ain't them. I'm outside Z. I'm in God. And God don't create no seconds. So to get to know you, they got to know God. That's been your problem. You've been trying. Come on, somebody. I wish y'all would shout with me. Ain't that the problem? You ain't no, you, you ain't no L, B, G, T, Q. You get offended if I try to put you in one of them. And they didn't call you one of them alphabets in your lifetime. Uh, they ain't they? But the truth is, you ain't none of them. <laughs> so you go to God to find out what is you. Your identity comes from your father. So when you look at me, you can say something different about him. You know what? <laughs> and I'm looking at you something different about you. Stand on your feet. Let's give God a praise. Don't, don't try to figure me out. You ain't going to be able to. Somebody say, I can't. I, I don't understand him. You never will. You just try to get understand God for you. Don't worry about me. Look at somebody say, don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. Because Cause, 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 cause he even got a name for you that nobody knows. He got a name for you here that don't nobody else know. He didn't tell me your new name. He didn't tell me, Marcus, your new name. It ain't my business what your new name is. He ain't even told you yet. But if he will, I ain't lesbian, I ain't homosexual, I ain't male chauvinist, I ain't none of that. I'm something beyond that. I'm in Christ. Hey, somebody, come on. Come on. I ain't show nothing. I'm outside of that. Come on. Praise the Lord. I ain't sick. I ain't deep, defeated. I ain't, oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Don't put no alphabet on me. I ain't an ex -term. I ain't nothing. In Christ, I'm a new creature. Say it with your mouth, I'm new. You ain't seen, Sad, you ain't seen nothing like me. Sad, you ain't never seen nothing like me. You ain't never seen nothing like me. You looking at the house, baby. But it's who, who I am is inside the house. I can't let you in the house. Look at somebody. That's why I can't let you in the house. Don't let no strangers in my house. Let no dogs in my house. Let no critters in my house. Come on. You don't let anything in my house. You looking at the house. You may not like the house. The house may need a little paint on it. Come on. 
Come on, cut your hand. House may need a little paint on it. Grass may need to be mowed. But you ain't getting inside. You can knock all you want to, but you bring a drama. You ain't getting in here. The, who I am is inside the house. Why are you standing out there looking, cri criticizing? I done painted up. I done moved stuff around. Hello, come on. I done remodeled. That's what you tell the person that come back to you wanting to bring you drama. Oh, I done done some changing up in here since you left. <laughs> come on, pray. <laughs> And they like, yeah, let me back in. Oh, no, I done done some changing up in here since you did. Brand new look. You can't just walk in dirty shoes no more. Come on, come on. Do your own stuff out. Come on, give God praise. Now go shake somebody's hand and tell them I'm brand new. Come on, get out your seat. Y'all done made me preach. Y'all done made me preach. Right. Don't shake somebody's hand. Come here, Marcus. Lay some on. Good to see you, man. Brand new preacher, bro. God bless you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, lady. Appreciate you. Man, I know you're brand new. I know you're brand new. God bless you, daughter. God bless you. God bless you. Give me a hug. Bless you. Bless you. Brand new sister. Brand new sister Connelly. Brand new. Brand new. Brand new. Brand new. I'm brand new. I'm brand new. Every day when you see me, I'm brand new. I looked yesterday. Somebody say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Y'all going to make me, y'all going to make me find my mind. I ain't going to lose it. Christ is in. Y'all going to make me find my mind up in here. Up in here. Y'all going to make me find my mind. Up in here. Up in here. All right. Y'all going to make... The pastor sing up in, here, up in here. The rest of us gonna scream up in here. No, no, she sings real good. She sings good. Call those things. <laughs> she sings good. Well, we're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. All right, we're blessed. Hey, it's good to see everybody. God bless you. The joy of the Lord is my strength. It is my strength. You may not always see me laughing, but the joy of the Lord is my strength. Praise him. Amen. 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 Even if i am got my serious face on, I know where my strength comes from. I want to turn, you turn a couple of scriptures here real quick. Now, I got my books out today, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to obey God today. Uh, 
So I'm going to rush this, real, this first part real quick. Uh, get a Bible. You need a Bible. And let's do this. Okay, Amos 3 and 8. Amos 3 and 8. Amos 3 and 8. God bless you. Hey, man, we are excited. I am excited because we get to reach uh, those of you who are at home, those of you who are around the world in Africa. Hey, Brother Josh Fat in Kenya, Rio both, Gethsemane, Macedonia, and soon to come Philadelphia. And those of you who are in China, hey, man, those of you who are in the U.K., those of you who are in the nations of the world, those of you that are here in America, both by Facebook, and we're so happy to say that you can find us on the, your Roku TV. You know, if you go to Walmart, you got a Roku TV now. Amen. I think you can get 100 inches for like $25. <laughs> got a house full of Roku flat screen TVs. But you can find us on your Roku TV now on uh, Joy TV Network. Look for the Shepherd's Fold Ministries. And uh, we come on uh, Saturdays at 5 o'clock, Sundays at 7 a.m., and we'll be on uh, Sunday night at 9 p.m. We're on every day uh, at some particular time. And so if you're just looking, uh, uh, you can get video on demand, and you can keep up with us. We're going to be doing a lot of fun stuff and a lot of informative stuff. Amen. We're getting ready to launch our... Uh, Marriage classes online. We're getting ready to on on on, on Roku TV. Uh, we're able now to reach out to uh, 45 million uh, subscribers, and and uh, that's a great jump. Uh, we've been for about a year, nine months to a year. We've been uh, on TV in uh, Wagner, Oklahoma, and Muskogee, Oklahoma, and so as of uh, Wednesday. Uh, we're plugged in now to be on Roku, and I know we're in various parts of the United States already because I've already gotten some reports. I'm excited about it because there's a lot of things we're going to do. We're going to showcase some of our ministers, our, our great praise team. They're going to be on doing some things. Uh, it's just so much is about to happen. So you want to uh, be one of our partners, praise God, if you can't get out. At least uh, plug in. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're excited about it. I'm, I'm excited about that. Amen. Because we've got some great ministers around here and great ministry Amen. and great people that you're about to see. Uh, but Amos chapter 3 verse 8. Let's start there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we thank God for... Our own minister, Ramon Amen. Williams. Amen. Amen. He's, been, he's been such a blessing to us. And he has a dual, a tri, a, a tri, uh, tri, or, or tri citizenship. He has one in heaven. Amen. He has one uh, here, and he has one with another local church. But Amen. he's a kingdom person. Amen. So when you're in the kingdom, uh, you know, membership, we have new membership classes that are, we've just started for all you who are, want, who are new members or wanting to be a member. Amen. You need to get with Pastor Robinson and Minister Terrence. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, ministers, uh, Pastors Pam and Wayne and Pam Lee, who are, who are absent today, but get with them. And, and uh, our First Lady, uh, uh, Sister Janelle Conley. And... Uh, so we can get you kind of scheduled to get you in some things so that you can be on the same page with us. But uh, the kingdom mindset is that uh, we embrace you if you are part uh, of, of God's body. If you love Jesus, if you are already saved, but if you would like to be with us, we just need to know it so we can watch over you. You know, we don't make it a habit of beating up people, amen, but, you know, we need to be able to, to pray for you, and when you're sick, you know, we, we do, through, with God's help, we, we, we do a good job of trying to take care of people when they're sick around here, 
you know, now if you don't tell us, you know, the Lord will speak to me sometime, but you know, a lot of times he don't tell me y'all in the hospital and outpatient. I mean, I don't walk that close with him. I walk close with him. He tell me some stuff, but he don't always say, this person will be in the hospital at nine o'clock now. Get over there. <laughs> I wish he did. I, I love it, but he don't tell me all that. He may put you on my heart and I'll pray for you, but when we know you're in the hospital or something, we'll do our best. Amen. You know, someone happen, happen in your family. If you let us know, you know, we got, a, we got a little network that we try to take care of you the best we can. Amen. We, we, we don't just pray for you, but we try to put some action with it. Amen. So, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's relationship is a two-way thing. Amen. So uh, these are the days that uh, if you're going to be a member of a church, you need to make that known. Amen. You know, like if we, you know, if we going together, let's go together. You know what I mean? Because if not, I'm going to see somebody else, too. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I shouldn't have said that. That didn't sound good, did it, Marcus? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I was just, just keeping the game real, though. <laughs> but no, that's how you do it. If we, if we, if we, uh, if we won, let's, let's be one, okay? All right. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a joke. That was a joke. So don't don't y'all get mad around here. Don't judge me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Don't don't try it. It was a joke. So, you know, y'all gonna have to learn when when a joke is a joke and and when something's serious, man. You can't be up. You can't be that uptight about everything. You know. Y'all sit and watch BT laughing and watch Steve Curry them <laughs> cuss and fuss, and then the preacher say something, and y'all take it to heart for real, man. Just trying to lighten y'all up a little bit. Y'all too heavy. Huh? huh? Yeah, yeah, don't get mad at me. I'm just joking. I'm, I'm a bad dude. My wife's sitting up in here. I'm going to say all that. She know me. She know I'm playing. Yeah, she know I'm playing. I was born at night, but not last night. Okay. Uh, Amos 3. Amos 3 and 8. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you. Amos 3 and 8. All right. We got it. The lion have roared. Who will not fear? The Lord have spoken. Who can but prophesy? The lion roars. The lion roar. Who will not fear? The Lord has spoken. Who can but prophesy? So I'm going to prophesy today. I'm, I'm going to prophesy out of what God has given me. And so I always have to make that, a, make that known to people who may not be used to prophecy in the way that I'm going to bring it. Because, you know, a lot of people ain't. So the lion roars. Who will not fear? The Lord has spoken. Who can but prophesy? We go to church and we hear preaching. And, and we want to be encouraged and we want to preach. But we just done that. I just... I exhorted you Amen. to preach, and I just did that. Amen. So now I'm going to give you a prophecy, and, and I'm not going to say, thus say the Lord about it, okay? So you, you probably need to write it down or, or be mindful of it. The lion roars, who will not fear? The Lord has spoken, who can but prophesy? To one, he, he gives prophecy to, Okay? And so we read, read that in the book of 1 Corinthians, but we go a lot of times through our life, and then we want, we want to see it, but we want to see it with all of the, the cape, the black cape flowing and the, and the wand and the, the Dracula cape and all that to make it look like it's real. And if we did, we wouldn't believe it. Smoke coming up and bats on the wings flying around. And then we say, you know, so... God don't have to do it like that, okay, because you wouldn't believe it, no. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 14 and 3. Because the Bible teaches us that God will give, give uh, a word of uh, wisdom, a word of knowledge, and so prophecy uh, uses a word of knowledge. Are you with me? Yes. Yeah, yeah, a word of knowledge, just supernatural facts into the future. 
And so we, we're willing to understand that if somebody tell us tomorrow, thus and so going to happen. But when you read the Old Testament, it is a big word of knowledge telling you about the future, supernatural facts. So why would God have Isaiah, Ezekiel, and all of them tell us the big picture and then love us so much that here we are and in this day not care about people in the little circles that we live in? Now, this is what I want you to understand. Remember the scripture that God is so high that he has to humble himself to look at earth, um, to, excuse me, humble himself to look at heaven, but then he also observes earth. He's so high that he, see, he has to humble himself to see heaven. But then he's so loving and merciful that he sees beyond the heaven and he observes those, the inhabitants of the earth. He's so loving that he took Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Jeremiah and he spoke thousands of years, the big picture. But then when we get down to the nitty gritty, he's so loving that he cares about you. Why would he care about you? Why couldn't he just blanket us and say, does the soul going to happen, and then leave us in the dark? So he cares about you. Why did he give us preachers and teachers? To entertain us? No. To prepare us individually. Why did he give us pastors? He gave us pastors so that they could care about our heart. He gave us the five-fold ministry. Look at this. He gave us the five-fold ministry, which in most of our upbringing, we, we didn't understand. He gave us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, okay? There's only one of those that touches all of the fingers. That's the apostle. The apostle touches, the apostle touches apostles, prophets. He touches the prophets, uh, apostles, prophets, uh, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, okay? He gave us these five because they signify the five senses of the body. The apostle, he is the one who signifies the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the eyes, okay? He sees, all right? Then he gives us the prophet because the prophet hears. He give, apostle, prophet, he gives us the evangelist because the evangelist is like the nose, always trying to, where's the souls at? Where's the, where's the move at? He gives us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors. He gives us the pastors because the pastors, they are the ones, they are the nurturers. Okay? They touch. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and he gives us the teachers. The teachers, what's the last sense? Uh, what's the last one? The, the uh, last uh, sense. Taste. Okay? The teachers give us a taste of what the word is. They break it down so we can actually taste revelation. But what we do, if we don't understand that God don't just give us pastors who pet us all the time. That's why people get offended when they run into apostolic people. Prophetic people. I just want a pastor. He liked me. He, he put up with my jive time all the time. He's a nurture. Touch me. He, I go to him and cry. Bring him the same old mess. That's what, that's what your mama do. Mama. Mama. Your daddy don't do that. He get his gun and ready to go out. But see, we're in the last days, and God is, is to get you ready. You need to at some point, be, uh, he needs to have that class. You don't just go, when you was in, the, in first grade, you had one teacher all day. You was used to one spirit all day. But now, what God is trying to get you to do is to get you ready, is to get you familiar. We can't get past the foundational. That's why you're having to deal with apostolic foundation right now. A lot of folks, the shift is they want to stay with the pastor. And the pastor, he just allows everything. He's just glad to have you because we were building churches. We let you come in any kind of way because we, we were seeker friendly. 
Okay, boy, this is going to be kind of make it short. Yeah, you let them come in. LGBTQ, A, B, C, D, D, F, G. And you never said nothing because it was all about the look. Everybody looked like the church. And, oh, that church is getting big. Look at all the people. It was swole. It was sickly. Everything was in there. People were doing everything. And the pastor had no backbone. He couldn't say nothing, wouldn't say nothing. Because if he did, if 29 people left, it'll be the talk of the town. 29 people left. They leaving. All the folk are leaving. He nervous. Y'all come back. Y'all come back. Because he's a pastor. An apostle lays a foundation. Foundation has to do with what God wants, what God don't want. You can't live this way. You can't live that way. Stop this. Do this. Paul came in. He wasn't in there saying, okay, you got a bunch of... Uh, all the LBGTQ, ABCDs in here, all right, just let them, you know, we hope they'll be right. But no, he said, get them out of here. And if you read your Bible, that's what the Bible says. See? Prophet come in, he, 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 uh, he, he hears the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord. We don't like it. We're going to kill you. Okay, get your sticks and stones because I ain't changing it. See, apostle, prophet, evangelist come in, he stirs up the people. Come out your sin, da-da-da-da. We're going to kill you too. I'm moving to the next town, so, you know, I won't be here. The pastor, he has to nurture them. All right, y'all, come on. Calm down, calm down. Now let's, let's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. And then the teacher breaks the revelation down. Now here's what he was saying. That's fivefold ministry. Okay. But there's been a shakeup. See? So if you're looking for church the way it was, you're never going to find it because there's been a shakeup. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 14.